Hello, this is Haka Devine, and today we are going to be reading some Rose Horror Stories. If you like this video, please like on video, comment down below, and subscribe to your channel. I forgot to actually select the stories we're going to read, and I will be a little bit picky. Well, let's get into this for now. And I have noticed that I haven't been doing much horror things, even though oh, oh, it's literally the 27th of October. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. This is interesting. All right, I think that's enough. Let's get into the first one. Which is the Museum Security Guard Manual. If you are reading this, you are a security guard at the MOR, Museum of Rarity. If this is not the case, please return this to the proper authorities. Good morning, new slave worker. This book will show you how to be a proper guard at this facility. But first, you must know the basic rules. Hello, welcome to our Museum of Rarity. Or more. We have about 11 rules and 3 A numbers. Please follow not just for your safety, but everyone's safety. Please, now please listen up. Rules. 1. Remember to always be kind and respectful. We want everybody to be invited here. Of all necessities. If you see a very unkind or unrespectful person, please call or inform staff about them. We will take care of them. If you are the mean one, refer to A. <sighs> and yes, I'm not going to say that because it's, it's implying something that I don't like to imply. 2. Do not touch any displays. Especially the skeleton ones. Don't want to break the item I'm shown to you. Don't, you? Don't want to tell them to dead skeletons that have been here for decades. Don't want spirits haunting you for, for centuries, even in death. If you do touch our displays, refer to 2A. If you see staff, please greet them. Hey, this job is really hard. We have trespassers, rule breakers, robbers, and a lot more to deal with. A simple hey or hi. Or please, it's been six days, let me out of the basement, will do. Just don't start conversations. Most of them are introverts. If you don't, refer to rule A. 4. Do not annoy staff. They may look nice and approachable, but do not, I repeat, do not annoy our staff. There have been countless reports of people all annoying staff. Example, touching, playing, speaking, or punching them. And then go I'm missing for 10 days later to appear either dead or due to succumbing to injuries or on the brink of death. Please don't annoy the staff. They're shy and don't like annoying people. If you do accept, if you do either accept that or refer to 1A. 5. If you hear knocking, call the staff. If you don't, refer to 1A. 6. Never use our computers for playing. Staff will see you, and you don't want to annoy the staff. Either that, or you want to see heaven or hell. If you do use the, our computers for or playing, refer to rule 1A or 1 two, or 2A. Oops. 7. If a book appears in one of the glass displays, call staff. Any books found in our glass displays are not meant to be there. All books are in the library, and books from the library that are displayed are only in the library. The books displayed are only the Bible and the dictionary. Never trust any other books displayed outside the library, and books that are displayed in the library are only the Bible and the dictionary. He placed them there. If you can't, then call staff, refer to 1A.
Eight, never look behind you. If you do, I will tell the staff and they will lead you to what uh, to do. Go to the bathroom, close your eyes, and leave the museum. And never come back. If you can't find exits, refer to 2A. Nine, what's the exit? Never go or look at the back seat. Never go to the back seat. If you do enter the back seat, refer to rule 3A. 10. If you hear scratching, walk out of the museum. Look up, and if you don't walk out or look up, refer to 2A. Ignore the last part of 2A. Then 3A. 3A. Read that? Yeah, me neither. Anyway, here are the emergency rules. Hello once again, welcome back to our Museum of Rarity, or more, but instead, and, and these aren't any regular rules, these are emergency rules, or, or more. Listen to these rules in case of emergency. 1. When an emergency, get out of it. During an emergency, refer to 2A and you might be safe. 2. Guns won't work, no matter what you do. No matter what emergency happens, gun activity will just fail. No guns would work. From crossbows to spark guns, nothing would work. It would just fail. So I have no idea why. And are investigating the problem as these rules are being written. As you're reading this too, just remember, we are your friends. 3. Don't call staff during this. All staff will already know 10 minutes before it even happens. No need for a call. If you do, you better start praying. 4. Never trust yellow fire exits. These are mouths ready for biting. These creatures only feed on humans. If an animal like a pig walks by it, nothing will happen. It will just walk as normal, but with a human, it will first see the outside. Then after a few minutes walking, but not moving, the brew will turn into a stomach. The whole time you are walking to a stomach, it, takes, it only takes 9 hours for it to digest everything except the skull. <sighs> Five, remember the three E's. Escape the building. Entrust staff and friends. Elaborate the situation to the cops. Rules. If any rules say refer to 1A or such, here. This is a staff room in, in every corner of every room. Go to the first cabinet and get the gun. Choose the thing that got, you got the gun for. 2A. If any rules refer, say, refers to 2A or such, here. There are exits or buggies in main rooms 1 to 3, the library, and the art display room. Go to one of these. Main room 2 is mostly in the middle, so this is your best option most of the time. And hide or run out. You have to run up from 20 minutes to 2 hours. 3A. If any rules say refer to 3A or such here. This is only for outside our museums. You have to drive or walk for two hours and then lay down and on anything non-dangerous or whispering don't ever or do so again for five minutes then go to your destination. 3 that was long. Anyway, why are we here? Oh right, you're signing up for the guard position. Now here are more rules. Yay! First of all, are you a daytime watchman or a nighttime protector? If you sign up for both, you will suffer. But anyway, we will now show you both. Daytime. One, do not interact with any of our guests. Remember, they are either your food source or just dead meat. Two, when in an emergency, do not call the cops. Let our food do so for us. Three, if you see a guest steal any of our food, Artifacts, murder them in cold blood. Time for, to feast. 4. If staff steals, tase them with your or taser, then bring them to our founder who is located on the fourth floor. 5. Murder all posers. Gut them. 6. Keep a taser, handgun, and, and head for protection and intimidation. Yay! Nighttime. 1. All staff will leave but you. Do not be afraid. 2. Our founder will not leave with the staff. If you see our founder, immediately empty your clip on them. This is not our founder. 3. In case of robbers, do not deal with them, but report them to our founder, who is now on the third floor. 4. If there are still guests in the building, feast.
But after midnight, all artifacts will transfer back to their first position and come back at 12.30 a.m. Make sure nobody is on the same floor you're on. If there is, refer to rule 6. Six. If you are on the third floor, or somebody is with you during the transferring. Blindfold just hold yourself with any cloth near you. If there is any cloth, do not panic. You owe now all the fees. Just close your eyes. Whatever suits you, I guess. And that's cut. Thank you for reading. Wait, you're asking why there isn't anything to talk about what you should do because it's a manual? Oh, silly. This is our such rules horror. We can't do that, or you will get deleted. What's a rules horror? Er, too bad. You will never know. End of the manual. <laughs> well, that was quite a fourth wall break right at the end there, wasn't it? Ow. That just blinded me. Whew. <sighs> The denizens. Ah, welcome back. I think you found this place useful. I'm glad you did. With some more time, we should be able to make this place is possibly inevitable for a majority of the population. Guessing this might be a series or something. Right, I did tell you I explained the denizens yesterday, didn't I? Alright, sit down and get ready. The denizens. The denizens are presumably native to the breezeway and possibly other realities. We aren't sure. They're like us humans. They're pretty much the same physically, but not in terms of appearance. They're commonly black entities. No, the color, not the race. Their eyes are glowing white. They do not seem to have hair or facial hair. They're usually dressed in old fabric sewn into clothing. They're pretty friendly for the most part. Unless you anger everyone or something. Then they'll probably get angry at you. But some go out of the way to actively harm. And in some cases, kill humans. Do! Search for a green pin located on their body. If you can't see it, run. They're not friendly. We've given green pins to denizens that we can trust. If we can trust them, you can too. For the next ones, these only apply to since that who have a green pin. Don't follow these if they don't. Except for resources, Denison's don't seem to need food, or at least the same amount we do. They seem they can seem to go ages and therefore it seems like they'll offer some up. Accept it, even if you don't need it. It might come in handy. Talk to them. They're friendly enough and might give some information. If you learn anything, report it to us. It might be new information we didn't have previously. Don't interact with any denizen not wearing green pen. These ones aren't friendly and are possibly lethal. Do not offer a pen to any saying that you've, you've lost theirs. They are lying to you and are attempting to seem trustworthy to others by obtaining one. I think that's it. Safe travels. The sound delay is going to uh, uh, kill me. They like the sound though. Oh dear, this one is way longer than I thought it was. <sighs> Nisa in Survival o o Guide, version 12.17. Hi, newbie. Lots of rumors have been spreading about your arrival. It's great to finally meet you. First off, do not read the contents of this envelope unless you are in a secure and private location. I swear to God, my soul, this is a prank, ink, or hazing, or some stupid shit. Meet me at the 7 Eleven gas station at 2 o'clock sharp off Spring Hill Road today if you need proof. Do not show this letter to anybody. Do not bring it with you. Do not. Bring it to school.
Warning! This information is confidential and dangerous. If you are caught by Great Hill School Administration, you will face severe reprimand. Keep concealed at all times. Do not bring onto school grounds or Great Hill School systems. If you are reading this, you should be in a secure and private location. If you are presently on the premises of Great Hill School, on or in the vicinity of a vehicle registered to Gray Hills O's High School. In the presence of Gray Hills High School faculty or administration, in the presence of an adult or individual who may compromise the content of this note to the administration of Gray Hills High School, then do not continue reading. Hide this letter and or envelope somewhere secure on your person. If possible, destroy it entirely completely. If an administrator has seen this note, Destroy it completely with by any means necessary. Well, first and foremost, it's going to be a lot, but don't panic. As long as you don't panic or do anything stupid, you will be fine. There are secret rules that we all, all quietly follow here to keep us safe. That's one of the few pros of Grey Hills. We stick together, we look out for each other, and a word of warning in or maybe solace, if anyone stitches, they lose that circle of protection permanently. As you come to understand, the rules we've tirelessly curated are our best defense. Following is the current list of rules you must follow to ensure your safety and survive the school day. Up to date as of August 26, 2023. I was checking for hidden text. Number one, do not use Google Chat or Hangouts to communicate about sensitive information. They demand that we use school shoot pro Chromebooks for a reason. They can and will read what you write. Do not message people via SMS, text messaging, Snapchat, or any social media without an active VPN. If the events of the day become too overwhelming and you need to mess up but to bring your homework for me to leave, make up an excuse. Make yourself vomit. Trip over your desk. We can help you if necessary. Do not mention anything unusual you have seen. Number two, do not speak in the bathrooms or in the presence of cracked walls, ceilings, things, or floor tiles. We have no idea what these creatures are or where they come from. We call them things. We can play it off at if we ever accidentally mention them in front of an admin. No two things are quite alike anyway, so it's hard to give them a more specific term. Some of the few things we know about them include that they love to burrow into dark cracks and, and cavities, and that they have a knack for making voices. If you must speak, scratch your skin, ruffle your clothes, or run water while you do. It makes you hard to imitate and verifies your humanity. Number three, do not enter the bathroom during passing time. Things manifest in excess, which can be overwhelming. We're not sure why. Throughout the day, there will it will usually only be one at a time, if any, which can be handled with ease. Note that they are manipulative and convincing. Do not trust what they tell you. Ignore their whispers and look away when they stare at you through the cracks. Most importantly, don't be fooled into thinking they can't reach you. I saw one huge bastard about the side as a coyote wriggle out of a hole and a broken and ceiling tile no bigger than the palm of my freaking hand. <sighs> Number 4. Never use the staircase nearest to the gymnasium with less than 3 people accompanying you. You'll notice the area is very poorly lit and that the cement walls are riddled with cracks and gouges, usually semi-covered by posters. This is a prominent nest. You are likely to be ambushed. Duck into the area or of refuge if you hear vague, hu vaguely human chattering or debris shifting. Most of the things don't understand doorknobs, but we keep makeshift barricades just in case. Using one of the pages hidden in the area's wheelchair, send so message to the door to the area a refuge is jammed. Do not mention any attack. A very class will rescue you from the room while 
out on a wellness walk. Number five, do not enter any empty classroom when wrecked by a professor. That is not your teacher. Something is temporarily using their body. Refer to this as being lost for short. Having to last anywhere from a few minutes to, in rare cases, several hours. As far as we know, this phenomenon is not the work of things. Walk briskly away and form the nurse or a teacher or another hallway. In a rare instance, that professor becomes lost in the middle of class, ignoring completely and awkward ears up until the bell rings. Do not make eye contact with them. Number six, any outdoor excursions are strictly prohibited without explicit permission from a faculty member of the agricultural department. These walks, study sessions, etc. must be reported to a HE faculty at least 30 to 45 minutes prior to the excursion. The teachers and custodians will need time to arm themselves and collect the trail camps set up at the edge of the woods. If it has not rained recently and it is not projected to rain soon, then teachers should be notified at least a day in advance, as they will likely need to send the campers off to tech, the tech department to decorate the footage. 6a. Always verify that all teachers, especially AG teachers, aren't lost. If a teacher's blinking is unnatural, forced, or unsynchronized, and if it seems stunted and uncertain, they are lost. You may interrogate them if you are unsure, ask them how old the walls are, this school is only 20 years old, or if the A can spell their name. If they inform you the walls are centuries old, or can only sound out their name, thank them and leave immediately. Six B. Be vigilant around the head of the AG apartment. For whatever reason, the poor veteran is most severely affected by the a phenomenon. Uh, in the instance that Miss Robbins is seen safely hunched over and or hobbling about the classroom, he is lost. Do not acknowledge him in any capacity. Do not make yourself known to him. Locate a nurse or nearby teacher and tell him that he has fallen out of his wheelchair. Number seven, substitutes cannot be trusted. They are sometimes implemented by the higher ups to make sure we're not discussing the irregular irregularities with each other. The teachers will always report that they are sick as their emails and Google Classroom posts are heavily monitored by administration. Do not confide in them even if they seem ignorant, compassionate, or trustworthy. They never are. 7a, the teachers are well informed but powerless. They have our best interests in mind and don't want to see us fall prey to things or administration. But there is little they can do for us. Oftentimes, the administration will, will force them to wear a wire in order to monitor us in the classrooms. The teachers will signal this by keeping their, their hands clasped for the majority of the class and writing the day's date in a different color from the month and year. Oh yeah, I just remembered it. Or they really... A weird substitute I had when I was a kid. After I got into high school, I just stopped standing for or the Pledge of Allegiance because why the heck was I in the first place? And this substitute came in and uh, started yelling at the class because I didn't stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance about how your are supposed to stand and it's like, whatever lady. <sighs> Number 8. If you run cross-country, avoid the forest as much as necessary. Your coach will never have you run in the woods, but administration will want to see that you do. After all, Grey Hills High School prides itself on its woodsy ambiance. They will officially attend a practice to see students putting the old nature trail of scarf through the woods to good use. In these events, you will be divided into groups by stamina, with each group head by a coach or assistant. They will be armed with bear mace, loud music, your tree instrumental, will be played for a generation of your run to intimidate any stalking things. 
Be prepared to fight for your life. Number nine. When cleaning the woods, do not let your guard down. As for graduation requirements, you will take at least one agricultural agriculture class. Part of the curriculum for most of these courses will involve heading out into the woods to maintain the trails. Your teachers will be armed. Assume any hold of discarded clothing or remains is a barrel or trap. For the sake of the facade, you will be told to work carefully. Be fast and be attentive. Inform your teachers of any an anomalies. Use immediately. You should refer to them as bears or coyotes. Do not fall behind. If one catches you, aim for its eyes and limbs. Stomp your feet and scare leaves when they, you call for backup. If a pack catches you, scream. It might help it hurt a little less. Number 10. Be hypervigilant on rainy days. Signs and attacks inside the building ramp up immensely in this weather. On these days, avoid the aforementioned stairway, any dark around the camp, alcoves, and all bathrooms. Teachers will attempt to have classes outside beneath covered pavilions. Do not travel alone inside the building. Number 11. Be vigilant when leaving school grounds. Sometimes the things get desperate. They will take any chance they can to keep you here. Do not use the bathroom or wander around the school in a small group 5 to 10 minutes before the bell rings. We won't leave you behind. But I can't promise we will be able to save you. <sighs> Number 11A. If you take the bus, study your bus driver before boarding. If the doors to the school bus are already open, any bars on the windows are broken, misshapen, or missing, or your bus driver does not have their hands on the steering wheel, do not enter the bus. Either things have reached the vehicle, or the driver is lost. 11b. If you drive to school, always keep your car doors locked and enter and exit your vehicle as quickly as possible. Make sure you see that some something has been tied to the parking to your parked vehicle. Usually it will be a rag and or a piece of, of clothing. Do not remove it before entering the vehicle. It's there to buy them time to grab you. Eleven C. Check your rearview mirror habit hab habitually. The things have never been observed to follow or stalk school buses. However, there have been four instances in which a thing was able to sneak into the back seat of a student's unlocked car. There has been one instance in which one followed a student home. <sighs> Number 12. We have means of trying to stop the things from adapting. We organize science for students to only be caught by the things and to lead the faculty to believe that their methods are effective. We disable the cameras in a section of the school and set up a controlled environment where a lone student can be attacked before several inconspicuous students jump to their aid. Any injuries sustained have always been non-lethal and are usually minor. These events always play out during school lunch blocks. This is all planned outside of school and orchestrated by an unofficial club that you need to know the details of. This is conducted on a bi-monthly basis. You will be informed a week in advance when it's your turn. I know this is frightening and I understand the urge to tell someone, but please keep this a secret. If you cannot handle this, I encourage you to leave this place. We will help you set up a method to convince your guardians to have you change schools. We will need at least a week so you have to start school next week regardless. If you tell anyone outside the school or system about this, you are, and I do not say this lightly, dooming us all. That is all. If you have any questions, concerns, or wish to back out, come to the beach just off Opal Road at noon tomorrow. We'll be under the pavilion. Good luck. See you Monday.
<sighs> Surviving Jerry's house. First off, ditch Jerry. He's a dumbass. I don't get why your friends is a guy that clutches a pet along with some 2D image on it and smells like a mixture of sweat and Cheetos. But ditch him, seriously. Okay, well that's just rude. I should get a body pillow one day. Probably not. Second, even if I say that, I know you're going over to his house to work on your history project, and you're probably going to attend regardless of what I say, so I'll at least give you some of the rules so you walk out fine. Actually, now I think of it, that is kind of weird. One, Jerry will give you a list of rules when you go over to his house. They'll sort of be accurate, but can also be really confusing. I'll clear it up for you. Ooh. He surprised his weird subreddit, so now he writes his house rules in a strange way. Two, the first rule you'll see is something like, don't go in the basement because they'll get mad. That they is Jerry's other friends, a bunch of sweaty college kids who definitely have not showered or seen the light of day in years. Don't go down there, because the stench might kill you, and I'm only half joking. Damn, Jerry already sounds like, like quite the in that grid stereotype, doesn't he? 3. Don't turn on the lights downstairs either. Those college kids really hate the light and will go crazy if you somewhat turn it on. Because one of them will have to go out of their little man cave and turn it back off. Honestly? I'd say just even be keep the light off in the basement off. Four, if you break either rule two or three, just say sorry. Jerry's list of promises look like like they will all get angry, kill yourself for something like that. And yeah, they will get angry, but saying sorry won't them leave you alone. They will just want to stay in the room and play games. They can't fight. <laughs> Already really funny. Five, for all that is holy, do not ever enter the bathroom. Honestly, it might be even better to take a tinkle outside in the bushes. Jerry does not clean the place up at all. If you go in there, that scent will stick to you, and you'll probably never live a normal life again. Six, if you see two red lights outside that look like eyes, just ignore it, and ignore Jerry too. He has a heart attack whenever it happens, and goes to his room to barricade, you're screaming like, It's they! It's they! They are here! But it's just a neighbor or his kids being idiots. Shrug it off. 7. I actually do try staying away from the mirrors in that house. Not because they're haunted like Jerry says, but because they're all in the bathroom and covered in God knows what. They're disgusting, and I'd say stay away from those mirrors if you can. Hey, Stay in the light! You don't know what awful things you might step on if you can't see what's in front of you. And that's a real problem because I'm pretty sure you don't want to buy a new pair of shoes. The light is your friend. 9. Don't enter Jerry's room. It's not just like the bathroom, it's even worse. Stay out of it. You'll old chill just. Your eyes will be burned by the sight of whatever weird things he has in there. And if he's gaming, your ears will be subjected to the worst sound imaginable. Please don't intrude on him. 10. If you break any of these rules here or on Jerry's list, he'll probably tell you to kill yourself. Don't do that. I don't know why he's so aggressive, but I think he's been watching one of those Twitch streamers. This one Twitch streamer called Lutier or God or something. He's a victim of a bad habit. But yeah, just ignore him and when he says that. Honestly, I have no idea why you're even going to Jerry's house. You could probably finish the school project on your own and save yourself the trouble of going into that den of death. Either way, good luck surviving that place. I'd say have fun, but I know you won't, so have a tolerable experience? That's all I can really give you. See you later. That was silly. <sighs> hey, you've been invited to the party I'm hosting the my house next Friday. It's gonna be a blast. I hope you're looking forward to it. However, I don't think you've been to a party of mine before. Here are some unspoken rules you must know before coming. 
If you have to go to the bathroom, you always have to take the one upstairs. Me and the other people will not appreciate you when you go to the downstairs bathroom. Two, you must stay up a for at least two hours and forty minutes at a party, even if you want to leave early. Otherwise, we will. Oh no, you don't have the time to actually properly enjoy the party. Three. We have been dead lights with grab and go out at some point. It happens. You shouldn't say a word about it. And I'm going to uh, pretend like they're so on. And don't leave the party because staying is definitely worth it. Even with the lights out. Four. Don't ever mention Steven. Five. There are people at the window screaming at you to leave. They're just killjoys. Six. If I offer you something to eat or drink, accept it. Even if the food or drink looks weird. It would be rude to decline a polite offer, wouldn't it? 7. Don't tell anyone that you're, yeah, you're going to my party. They will tell you not to go. But they're just jealous that they themselves are not invited. 8. If you start to feel dizzy or wobbly after eating or drinking the things I've offered you, just let it happen. The feeling is only there so we can take over. So don't worry about it and let it happen. I can't wait for the party. I'm sure it's going to be amazing, as long as you follow the rules. See you next Friday! Hmm. Last one. Let's get... Let's go. Trolled. You have been trolled. Want to troll yourself? Follow these troll rules. Do not disrespect them. Wondering what trollering.com is and why you are here without um, answering said website? Trolling.com is a website for trollers to discuss the trolling deeds of troll. I don't know if that's a real website. I'm not going to verify or check, and you shouldn't either. We are a Canadian and business, not America. America sucks. <laughs> Some words will be trollified. Examples are troll with, with troll and troll. Sucks with sucks and sucks. And laughing with lol and xds, etc. Do not talk about your griefing of buildings. Grief will result in a and an automatic termination of your PC, not account. To wait, if you have trolled one of the official troller accounts, do not expect to be saved from termination. 3. Scamming is not trolling. Scamming is mental illness. If you have been affected by scamming, call us at a phone number or visit the help section. But in the help section, send an image of the scamming. 3B, if you are the scammer, surrender yourself or suffer. Your choice. 4. Sharing of personal information is not permitted and is a major offense. 4A, if somebody has shared your information, visit the help section and we will oh, share their information with you. Wait, what? 5. Do not use uh, banned words in chat boxes, group names, search bars, or names. 6. We do not have a call feature. If you have a call button on the top right of your screen, refresh and do not press it. 7. Do not go to our partner website, Trollers at Not Et. It does not exist. 8. Video cameras can be enabled through settings, but it does nothing. 8A. For this reason, do not click it. Do not. 9. If someone on your camera turns on, leave the website and turn off the computer. 10. No trolling admins. We only hire the most sensitive admins because they're the cheapest. Thank you for reading. Don't answer the knock at the door. Just in time for the new Wi-Fi to break that site.
Okay. That was r slash rules horror. If you like this, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye, and have a spooky day.